Hello friends, welcome to IntelliGear and this review of the Coleman dual fuel stove. Just a little quick update. Uh, I opened a Facebook account, so you guys can follow me on that now. So now you can follow me on Facebook, Twitter, and Google+, if that's more convenient for you than logging on to YouTube. And also, I uh, just wanted to remind you that um, I appreciate y'all's participation. So please remember to like and uh, share my videos if they're helpful to you. And don't forget to visit my channel if you're um, a first time viewer. I have a lot of other videos that you may be interested in and you may just want to subscribe. Okay, thanks. So let's get right into it. We got this uh, dual fuel stove here. And um, on the Coleman website, it's uh, MSRP or Manufacturer's Suggested Retail Price is $129. However, we at the IntelliGear project endeavor to save money and help our viewers save money. So we didn't pay that. And it's uh, sitting on the shelf at your local Walmart store for right around $100. Believe it was $99.97 at my store. But we didn't pay that. We went on Walmart's website and we found this stove on sale for 64 bucks. So we went into the store, asked the manager if um, we needed to go through all the hassle of the online ordering since it's an item that's available for in-store pickup. And the manager went ahead and sold it to us for $64 plus tax. So that's what we paid for this guy here. Now, it's dual fuel and what that means is it will run off of Coleman Camp Fuel also known as white gas or regular unleaded. Now this uh, Coleman fuel it's going for around nine or ten dollars a gallon in my area uh, tax included. It's, it's in that range and you know wow that's a lot for a gallon of anything but it's a pretty good value when you take into account like a propane stove for example and how much those cost and um, how much they use so you're saying you're nuts ten dollars a gallon for that well maybe I am maybe I'm not but if you look here you will see let me zoom in here for you that the uh, Coleman camp fuel is the equivalent of four and a half of those little propane cylinders and depending on where you go, I mean, those can be, you know, two fifty to five bucks a pop. So you know, if they if they're five bucks a pop, two of them, and you got half of the burn time. So in my estimation and summation of the situation, I would have to say that the winner is the uh, the Coleman fuel. And then, of course, it being a dual fuel, let's roll around this way. Of course, it being dual fuel, you get that second fuel choice, which is uh, unleaded gas. Now, <clears throat> if you're just using it to go camping, and obviously this is um, a stove that you would take car camping, <laughs> you're not going to backpack this in. But if you're just using it to camp, yeah, maybe you could just get away with the propane. But keep in mind, you got to carry more of the propane cylinders um, as opposed to just one jug of fuel like this here. So that's something to keep in mind too. But here's the other thing to keep in mind. What happens if there's a natural disaster or other emergency? Um, if you remember back to Hurricane Katrina, are you going to be able to go to your local Walmart or store for that matter? and buy some more propane cylinders when you run out or have your neighbors already looted it. So that's something to keep in mind. Uh, another thing to keep in mind is what if uh, you know you live where it snows like like I do and there's a blizzard and you're snowed in for two weeks and there's no power. Well in my house we have an electric range so if there's no power we're gonna be eating cold cans you know so for double purpose camping and using um, as an emergency backup cooking system this was the best bet and that's why I didn't go with propane 
Now, I'm not knocking propane. Hank Hill would kick my butt. Um, you know, selling propane and propane accessories, that's fine because it is easier to use propane. But just something you might want to keep in mind when you're looking for your own uh, cooking system. So here's the stove. Let's bring it over here. And uh, as you can see, it's got this nice handle here. So you can pick it up like a suitcase. I would say that weighs maybe a little bit more than a gallon of milk. Uh, I tried to look on their website and different places to see how much this thing weighs and my bathroom scale is not accurate enough to weigh this thing. So I'm just going to guesstimate that that weighs a little bit more than a gallon of milk. That's something everyone can relate to as far as weight. It's, it's light enough that even your kids could take it out of the car and over to the campsite. And let me zoom in here before we open this because I, I was really impressed with this. If you look here, is that focused? Yeah, okay. It looks like a leather um, finish. The paint has like a leatherette appearance to it. I thought that was pretty neat. So, this is something. I don't know, whatever. Maybe someone else wouldn't mention it. I thought I would. All right, so, got this little latch here to keep the lid in place. And then the lid just comes up. You've got these wind guards here that fold out and you just squeeze down. There's a little notch that this goes into to keep it from moving out and protect your flame from the wind. You know, while we got this open, um, it came with instructions. I'll show you those. It came with an instruction manual, but they've put a sticker here, some stickers to, you know, help remind you because you might use this once or twice a year and you're going to kind of forget. So they put instructions there on a sticker. That was very thoughtful, very good idea. And then you got this, uh, this grate here and it's made out of, um, pretty heavy duty bars that are, um, nickel chrome plated for, uh, making it easier to clean. And this is designed to also fold up out of the way so that you can light the stove and it does remove so you can clean it. It's easier to clean. And then the fuel tank or the pressure tank just comes right out. It sits down in there. So you got the pressure tank here. There's, I'm going to try to get in camera view here. There's a little pump here to pressurize the tank and a little adjustment knob to adjust the uh, the flame height and then your uh, your filler cap here and then all you do is it just comes comes in slides in this hole through the stove and there's little notches there and it just it just sets there so this long piece is called the generator and the way this works is the pressurized fuel in here shoots out this and travels through this plenum it comes back up here and, and your flame is down here and this flame heats the generator and it, it turns that liquid gas into a vapor just like natural gas so you get a really nice blue flame and um, just like a natural gas stove or an LP stove so the, your primary burner there it's um, 7500 uh, 7, BTU 7500 BTU and then the second one is 6500 and the way that's operated is there's just a little valve down here that you turn to turn it on. Now I'm going to do a how-to video on how to use this, how to light it, how to safely operate it. This is just a review. So anyways, um, 64 bucks, yeah, that's, that's a pretty good uh, value in my book. And let me just give you a little backstory on this Coleman stuff and my love affair with Coleman um, products, especially their lanterns and stoves. Uh, when I was a teenager, <coughs> excuse me, when I was a teenager, I was cleaning out the garage and I found all of this Coleman gear back up in the corner of, a, of the garage under a shelf, all dusty and cobwebs and stuff. And I asked my dad about it. And he said, well, if you clean it up, 
you can have it son. So I got the, a stove very similar to this one made in the 70s and a lantern and like um, an ice chest and some other stuff. But anyways, it, it was amazing because this compared to that 1970s one, there's not too many um, big changes that they've made. They've done some little things like they put the filler cap here now because it used to be on the end and people in their, you know, their great wisdom and impatientness were unscrewing it here while it was still attached to the stove and the stove was still hot and then the vapor was igniting and causing, you know, fire and chaos. So they put it here now, the filler cap, that's, that's a good thing. But, you know, it just, it, it, it's amazing that this is very similar to the to the one that my dad had from the 70s and and I would venture to say very similar to you know their first models as well so I mean just some little things have changed like the little pressure pump now the plunger inside instead of being a um, being uh, it was leather on mine I had to replace all that stuff when I refurbished my dad's stuff uh, the little plunger on on here was uh, leather and now it's rubber just little things like that but uh, high quality stuff and it's a testament to the um, thoughtfulness and engineering that went into making these lanterns and uh, stoves so that's uh, pretty much it I guess and um, just something to keep in mind that you know it'd be nice to have to go when you're going on your um, your camping trips but also in emergencies if you get one I suggest you get the dual fuel now the thing is just because it's dual fuel doesn't mean I use unleaded I would only use the unleaded in an emergency when I couldn't get the white gas um, you know like a hurricane Katrina situation or something or I'm out in the middle of nowhere and got to cook and that's the only time I'd use it and the reason I say that is there's impurities in unleaded gasoline and additives that are put into it that will lessen the life of your generator so you know whatever it's 10 bucks a gallon that'll last for a long 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 time so yeah that's uh oh and you know what? i forgot there's this we're not done yet there's a couple other things that came with this stove a uh, a filter funnel with a uh, vapor barrier bag so when you're um done filling it up you don't get stinky gas fumes everywhere and this is what that looks like there's a filter element down inside there to catch any particulate from getting in to the uh, the tank <clears throat> excuse me I'm kind of under the weather here but yeah if you're gonna fill these up you definitely want to get a filter funnel because the tiniest little piece of dirt or trash that gets down in there it can block up those generators and the stove won't work and it's a heck of a time cleaning them so you got that and then it also came with um, um, a more in detail instruction manual here and um, I'm surprised they actually put the English first usually when I get instruction manuals I have to hunt through it to find English but and it's got you know they're not color pictures but it's got good clear pictures to illustrate what's going on and what you need to do and if you get one of these I definitely suggest you read this at least read it one time and then you'll have your backup instructions for when you pull it out once or twice a year on the lid there but don't just go half cocked and try to fire one of these things up and not understand how it works because it's dangerous and it can bite you and you don't want to burn your house down or catch yourself or your loved ones on fire anyways to, to that note I will be doing a how to operate safely use whatever I don't know what the title is going to be but I'll be doing a separate video on how to actually use one of these in the future I'm not going to be able to get to it today though okay well I appreciate you guys sticking with me I uh, hope this video was useful and if it was useful please remember to hit that like button um, or share it with your friends and then don't forget also you can follow me on Facebook now and Twitter and Google+. Alright, thanks a lot friends. Until next time, this is IntelliGear signing off. Be well.